The sun rises again, the birds still fly, new leaves still unfurl, the chickens are ever strutting, time passes on. It has felt like we're in suspended animation while we process the event of my brother-in-law's sudden death, but life carries on. Good morning everybody. I'm sorry it's so soggy again. Look at your comb, dude. Bunch of curious little things, aren't you? It's been a hard couple of weeks dealing with everything. The literal cyclone collided with an emotional cyclone to make a messy ball of difficult stuff. It was one of the worst storms that we've ha ever had in the North Island. In the middle of the shock and the early grief, Steve had to leave for a six and a half to seven hour drive to see his brother's face one last time and say goodbye at a local funeral service with a few family members. Driving towards the same road that killed his brother, Another very hard thing is that my brother-in-law's wife was pregnant with their baby. It was not so long ago that I was pregnant with Scarlett, who's now one and a half. And I remember having to take Steve to A&E and then several investigative procedures after at the hospital while I was pregnant. I faced thoughts and fears of what if I have to deliver our baby alone or what if I have to raise our baby alone. I'm so thankful I didn't, but to see those fears realised in someone that I care about. That sadness cuts to the depths of my being. But I've said before, even in the hard times, there's still hope. Throughout this time, I've felt God before me, beside me and behind me, mourning with me, bringing loving people around me, giving me songs to sing, and helping me to be there for those who need it. What has helped me through all of this is to tell God I'm sad, um, but also I trust you. I'm not naturally very good at letting go of control, but God has taught me to trust him more and more. There's freedom in being able to put my trust in someone bigger and wiser than me. I may not understand what he's doing, but I choose to trust him anyway. That's how I grow hope in this situation. I lay everything at his feet. It's been hard to get back on top of things around here at the homestead, and yet I'm driven by the fact that I'm actually having minor surgery next week. Um, it's not the best timing, but I've been trying to get house cleaning done and uh, get back on top of food things, so it won't be too much work for him, and so I won't be stressing about things when I'm out of action. Uh, I don't like being out of action. And then I really just wanted to get a bit done in the garden because, well, that's good to have exercise going into surgery anyway and um, I thought it would be good for my headspace just to try and get some stuff done in the garden. So I got the herb garden. I started tackling that. Wicking back some of the weeds and the bigger shrubby herbs. The whole herb garden is going to have to be redone, but uh, I've made a start, so that makes me feel better about it. I'm making a new grit container for the chickens. I'm going to try out using uh, a bigger container with a hole cut in the side and a lid on. So I use a whiteboard marker to draw the outline of the hole and then I can rub it off if I want to change it. I uh, don't know whether this will be big enough for the chickens to reach in or not so I'll just see how it goes. And I'm about to drill some holes in the bottom for drainage. Mm. I'm actually going to take the lid off and try and drill through the top because then the plastic will get pushed out towards the bottom instead of sticking up around the edges of the hole.
do that for the next lot. It's just easier to drill like this, but it makes a better hole for drainage if you do it like this. So I've done a bunch of holes on there. I did some holes around the edge as well because uh, that the container's up the right way. Uh, that this edge sits lower down, so I figure that's where the water is going to go. And it'll be when I screw it into the post, it'll be leaning slightly that way. So I've put some a few more down that side. Uh, I ended up just screwing, drilling through uh, in and out both sides just to tidy up the edges of the holes. So hopefully the water can get out nicely. Uh, that was with a two millimeter drill bit so pretty small. I could make them bigger but I don't want the oyster grip to get through so we'll see how that goes. And now I just have to screw it into the post. Uh, the drill just ran out of battery so I'm going manual for this one. <laughs> in there. I don't know but we'll see how they go. I kind of forgot to harvest the beans. Some of these are getting a bit big. Someone's had a munch out of that one. Um, the ones that are really fat I'll just leave to save the beans for seeds. This is Henry's Climbing Butter. Oh yay, we got some scarlet runner beans now too. I have not managed to clean my potting shed yet. Uh, kind of the opposite. I think a lot of things are being stuffed in here, especially um, for the storm. But anyway, I'll make the most of the space I've got. I'm going to get my brassicas started. Uh, yep, a little bit later than I would have liked, but I'm going to get them done now. I'm going to be doing broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Most of these are king's seeds ones. Uh, some kale maybe, I'll see how many seedlings are popping up in the garden. Uh, tuck soy and puck choy. Uh, carrots are there, to, I need to sow carrots and parsnips in the garden. I just need to prepare the ground first. I would like to clean my trays but I just don't have time to do that before my surgery at the moment. Uh, I just need to get the seeds sewed. So I use these little trays, the same ones I use for starting lots of things. And then when the seedlings are big enough I'll prick them out into these six cell packs so they have more space. I'm going to fill these up with my seed raising mix. I'd like to make a block of wood to cover the tops of these to help firm down the um, potting media but uh, for now I'm just using this um, piece of wood which doesn't obviously doesn't fit over them but I just gently firm it down flatten it uh, to make it even and just um, give a slightly firm place for the seeds to take root 
terms of a seed raising mix. Ready for seeds. One of the broccoli varieties was getting a bit old, the seeds, so I've sowed them reasonably thickly in there. Uh, it's always better to sow more than you think you need because you could, especially with brassicas, you can always eat them as microgreens if you have too many or give them away. If I only want a smaller number of any of the varieties, uh, I just split one of these little trays in half. Uh, so like one I've done, one of the varieties of red cabbage I'm growing in one half and then green savoy cabbage in the other half. Uh, so I don't want, I don't need a whole tray of both of those. Um, you can sow them reasonably thickly in these little trays because you're going to end up pricking them out and they'll have more space to grow. And then I just cover them with a light layer of seed raising mix and they're ready to go into the big tray. Right, I'm all done with my brassicas, I think. I'll put them in this big tray which can hold water. I do bottom watering, so fill up the tray rather than, I mean the big tray, the bottom tray rather than the individual trays. Uh, so the seeds don't get washed around and then they just soak up the water. Last season I made this little mini cloche cover out of an old neck curtain to cover the seedlings to protect them from the white butterflies. We're going to uh, chop some, chop and bag some tomatoes for the freezer. We just keep them in bags in the freezer. Uh, to turn into concentrated tomato soup. Some of the, some of the tomatoes actually have late blight, I think it is. Uh, I've never had much of a problem with it before, certainly not like this on the fruit, but it's because of all the rain, masses of rain that we've had. That was almost three kgs of tomatoes. We had, the part of this bag was already frozen, so we added to that, and then two kgs there, and then we saved a few for fresh eating. And they'll go into the freezer to be made into soup later. The rain's turned it into a, a bit of a weedy mess out here. Um, and you can see a lot of the tomato plants First I thought it was just wind damage that browned the leaves, but I think it's mostly late blight. Or probably a combination of both things actually. Um, that's... Whoa! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> you gave me a fright. <laughs> you have to be in it now. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> um, yep, that's what the cyclone brought us the tomatoes but we've still got some decent ones thanks for joining us today guys choose to grow hope and we'll see you next time bye There will be joy in the morning. There will be joy in the morning. 
If it's not good, then he's not done. No, he's not done with it yet. There will be joy in the morning. There will be joy in the morning. There will be joy in the morning. If it's not good, then he's not done. No, he's not done with it yet. There will be joy in the morning.